Hey everyone, it's Samantha, and today we are doing another video recipe, and this is for soft pretzels homemade from scratch. And I know it sounds scary, and believe me, I was totally scared to try out a homemade from scratch dough recipe. The yeast really just intimidates me a lot, but I pulled it off, and I know you can pull it off too. I cheat and I let my KitchenAid do most of the kneading, which helps me a lot. Let's get started. All you need is some all-purpose flour, some brown sugar, some salt, and some yeast. And I just used this bread machine yeast. It works just fine. Um, it is a rapid rise type of yeast. And then my husband's over here warming up some milk, and it needs to be 110 degrees. And then we're also going to need some butter. See the description below for the exact recipe. I pulled this off of Pinterest and it absolutely is wonderful. So when the milk was warm to 110 degrees, I moved it to a measuring cup and I'm going to add the yeast and I went ahead and rinsed out my same little pot and added the butter in there to start melting. So I've got one and one and a half tablespoons of the yeast. I'm just going to add it directly into the milk and then I'm going to just whisk this together and you're supposed to let this sit for a couple of minutes so I just let it sit here after I whisk it together and this is what it looks like so I go ahead and get everything else done while this is sitting I've got some sugar in there I'm just going to add in my milk and yeast mixture I'm just going to use a spatula to scrape that out then I've got my melted butter and I'm going to add that to the mixture as well and again, I'm just going to use the spatula to scrape out all the extra butter that's in the pot there. And I've got my KitchenAid mixer with a bread dough hook on. I'm just going to mix this up just a little bit. And then you need to add your flour and your salt in. And the flour goes in one cup at a time. So here is cup number one. I'm going to give it a good mix. Then I went ahead and added in my salt with my cup number two. And this is after three cups of flour have been added. And this is after four cups have been added. And finally, all four and a half cups have been added. So I'm just going to incorporate all of the flour into the dough and let it knead in the machine on low for about 10 minutes. And when it is done kneading, it looks like this. And it might be a sticky ball. You might have to knead it just a little bit more if it's super duper sticky but I found that mine wasn't super sticky after 10 minutes. So I've got my greased cellophane and my greased bowl that I'm going to let my dough rise in. Now I'm just taking all the dough out. It is going to be a little bit sticky, but it's supposed to be um, a little bit sticky. I'm going to knead this just a little bit with a tiny bit of flour to hopefully get some of that stickiness off of it. I'm just hand kneading. I'm not very good at kneading. You don't have to be good at kneading if you have a KitchenAid mixer or something else that can do the kneading for you. I'm just getting it kneaded enough that it's not super duper sticky. And it just took me maybe 30 seconds to knead this just a little bit. And now here's what my dough looks like. I've got it in the greased bowl and I'm just gonna cover the top of the bowl with that cellophane wrapper and let it rise for about an hour until it's about a double in size. And this is my trick for my rising. I take it and I wrap it up I preheat my oven to about 170. That's the lowest that my oven will go. I'll just turn it on for about two or three minutes. You don't want the oven to be hot, but you want it to be slightly above room temperature. So if it's too hot, just leave the oven door open until it cools off to just slightly above room temperature. You should be able to stick your hand in and it just feels slightly warm. And then I let my dough rise in the oven and it's perfect that way. Now, after it's risen for about an hour, I pulled off the cellophane. Now I just need to punch it down just a little bit and then some of the air will deflate out of it. You can see it deflates pretty quickly. And that's totally okay. That's what you want. Now here's what my dough looks like after it's risen for an hour. Now it's time to shape our pretzels. So I've got some baking soda and some warm water mixed up in here. I'm just going to give it a good stir and get it stirred up. And I'm going to brush this on. The recipe that I use says to dip it in this, but I found that when it was when we were trying to dip, it was super duper messy. And there are my baking sheets I'm going to use. I end up having to use three baking sheets because the pretzels end up being big when you shape them. So here's the ball. I'm going to divide this into 12 separate pieces so the recipe says cut it in half then cut each half in half and then cut each half in three so there's half there's half and half 
and then I'm gonna make each one of these balls into three. So I just kind of eyeball it there and I'm going to just break it into three separate sections. And there's one, there's two and three. So I'm gonna do that with each one of the balls and they are a little bit sticky. I'm totally just eyeballing this. They don't have to be perfect. So just go with your best eyeball guess. And there they are, there's 12 dough balls. Now my husband is super good at shaping the pretzel, so I have him demonstrating this. I'm so thankful he let me film his hands doing this. But what you wanna do is you wanna roll it out as thin as you can get it in just one giant long string, just as thin as you can get it. You think it looks super thin, you think it's gonna not be right, but they actually end up rising significantly. So the thinner, the better. And he's just rolling this out, and it does take a little while. You are gonna roll it quite a bit, and that's we found that the more you roll it, the better they turn out. So don't skimp on this step. Be sure to roll them out really, really thin. And they end up being about three-ish feet long. I'm not sure exactly, but it seems to be about three feet long or a yard. Also, you want the thickness of the piece to be about even. So he's going back over it, trying to get out any of like the lumpiness so that the whole thing will be sort of even. And now it's time to shape it. And you just twist up the strands. This is the first one, so he's thinking about how to twist it. You just twist it over, press down the little pieces, and there is your pretzel. I love that each one's a little bit different and they look so good. He's really good at it, so I make him form most of them. So next, I just set them on the sheet, and some of them are twisted multiple times, and then some of them are just twisted once. Now I'm brushing them with that baking soda and warm water mixture, and I found it was a lot easier just to brush over them with a little brush than actually try to dip the pretzels, because the pieces of the pretzel are super thin, and they get kind of flimsy when you're trying to hold them into the water. So I just brushed them this time, and it seemed way less messy and way easier to do. Next, it's time to pop these babies into a 450 degree oven for 7 to 11 minutes. So I just set my timer for 7 minutes and then I checked on them, but they ended up taking the full 11 minutes. And then I'm going to melt my butter here when it gets closer to time. I also made some cinnamon sugar, we got some sea salt, and there's my melted butter. Here are the pretzels that come out. I don't like them to get super brown and super dark. I actually like them to stay all the way soft, even on the outside, but you could definitely cook them a little bit longer to get a crispiness on the outside. I'm just brushing these with butter now. I cleaned off my brush from earlier, and just dipped it in the butter, and then we're gonna season these. Here's a look at the pretzels. We made some really, really thin and long ones, and then we made some regular sized ones where we didn't stretch the dough out quite as much. And then we broke one of the balls into two little pieces to make those teeny tiny pretzels, and they were so cute. That's probably the right size for a kid. So mine, I just sprinkled some sea salt over the top, and for my husband's, I put cinnamon sugar over the top of his. This is supposed to be a copycat Annie Ann's recipe, but let me tell you, there is nothing like a fresh, warm pretzel that you made yourself. They are just absolutely amazing. My husband and I love them. And these will be great. You can just stick them in the freezer and then heat them up as you want to make them. And they are just so good. Uh, so I recommend trying this recipe out for yourself. From start to finish, this takes anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours to complete the whole recipe. But you end up with a lot of pretzels. You can stick them in the freezer, save them for later. And the half size ones are perfect for kids. So that is all I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel do a lot of different kinds of videos over on this channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. Have a great day. Bye.